Glenn, give us some more detail on your fund and how it is different from other traditional and alternative products. The two funds that we currently have live both leverage off capabilities in the bank where we've traditionally been very strong at. And what we're trying to do, there's certain commonalities, but I think the funds are really independent in terms of the nature of, of their funds. But really what we've tried to do is focus on competitive advantages that we have in the bank and try and package that into solutions that make sense. So our first fund that we ran, which started in the beginning of 2017, was the Investec Specialist Investments South African Credit Co-Investment Fund. And that fund, as its name says, is basically a co-investment fund alongside Investec Bank. What we look to do in that space is we like to isolate credit opportunities where the bank is really strong at originating assets. So a lot of the assets are loan or credit type of opportunities. The whole idea of a portfolio like this is what we're trying to do is we're trying to achieve a low volatility income solution. What we do there is we believe, you know, from, from a value proposition, if you, if you look in the South African market, especially from a credit perspective, the investable universe is really quite quite small. There's not much credit opportunity one has. So historically, how have people been able to access credit in a South African context? A lot of that has been bank type of debt and a little bit of corporate debt that does get issued. What we found though is that as soon as these type of assets are originated, because there's such a small investable universe, a lot of the large institutions are basically clamoring for any type of access that they can get to these sort of assets. Sometimes they take massive oversubscription of, of these type of assets. Sometimes there's private subscriptions for certain institutions. But what we found is that there's definitely a need and an opportunity from a bank to say, can we take these assets that sit on our balance sheet and try and give clients especially retail or kind of quasi-institutional fund managers, the opportunity to get gain access to these assets. The environment means that there's not a lot of these type of corporate assets that we have, but the assets that, that Investec originates on its own balance sheet, we co-invest in the fund. So I think the important thing that, that one always asks from a co-investment perspective is that there's a complete alignment in terms of the fund manager, the investor, as well as the bank. So I think the important thing is that our investable universe focuses on any type of assets that the bank originates and we have the right, but not necessarily the obligation, to participate in any of those. So we have an independent credit process that looks at both the credit perspective as well as how it fits from a portfolio construction perspective. So are we achieving the appropriate diversification? Is our term correct? Does it fit obviously within the construct of our mandate, both the investment mandate as well as the regulatory environment? can we you know, facilitate what, what we're trying to achieve from a, a risk and return perspective. So you know, we, the, the sort of assets that we, that we use, we may not, not be appropriate for the fund in terms of the term of those assets as well as from a rating perspective. But I think w what is important is that all the assets that we participate in are actually held by the bank and will continue to be held by the bank. So we have the right to participate in that where we feel it is appropriate for the fund as well as ultimately for investors. The potential that that has is it gives clients access to assets that are not traditionally available in the market. When one looks at the list of, of assets in there, you'd see there are names that are not really familiar to most traditional income or, or balance type of portfolios. And I think that is quite a nice um, situation. In a fund like this, it's critical for us to say, well, how do we manage liquidity and how do we manage credit risk? So the sort of process that we have takes care of these sort of assets and trying to understand those sort of critical elements from a fund management perspective. Because when one thinks about these type of assets, they're not really traditional assets. So some are listed, some are non-listed. Observable prices are not really there. So how does one find appropriate valuations that you know you don't prejudice any investors that are coming into a portfolio or exiting at any point in time, I think that is critical for us. And well, as well as understanding it from a liquidity perspective. So, you know, this fund being a qualified investor hedge fund, it has monthly liquidity. But when uh, one looks at the nature of the instruments, we have slightly longer term assets. One needs to create an environment where we can facilitate liquidity on an ongoing basis. The other key element that we had, and as I alluded to, we, we've tried to create a portfolio where we isolate 
credit as exposure from a corporate perspective as far as possible. So what we've tried to do is we've limited any sort of interest rate risk or currency risk. Any potential opportunities that we come across, we have basically hedged that back so that we isolate the credit opportunities and we're not taking any rate risk. Similarly, from a foreign exchange perspective, any offshore assets we, that we get, this fund is a um, South African and Czar based portfolio and we hedged all of those flows back to, to RAND so we don't take any, any currency risk. Whilst there are other funds out there that are available to investors, um, I think there are very few opportunities where one can actually get pure credit exposure to assets and especially access to assets that stem from a banking opportunity. The other important thing I think from a fund perspective, what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to achieve a stable low volatility income solution. So the nature of the assets is we, we focus more on kind of a buy to hold. And I think it's also important, you know, in an investable universe where there's not that many of these opportunities available, it's hard to, to chop and change your portfolio. So we're not trading on a, on a very active basis in terms of what we do. These sort of assets, by their nature, we, you know, assuming you, you, you hold those to maturity, you basically get a steady flow of coupons, you get a st steady flow of liquidity that comes back to you from either the loans of on an amortizing basis or at a principal at maturity. So, you know, when, when one looks at the portfolio relative to other type of portfolios in, in the market, I think investors are quite like the idea that from a return perspective as well as from a low volatility solution, there's quite a predictable stream of what we can achieve. So obviously, given the fact that all the assets that we have, we remove interest rate risk as far as possible. If one negates movements in the floating rate basis that you have, we have a fair idea of what the forward projected yield is at any point in time. And any new type of assets that we bring to the portfolio are obviously brought within that line. So whatever our target return is, trying to understand what the environment is, we obviously try and achieve that on a consistent basis. Glenn, thank you for joining us and sharing your knowledge on the funds. Thank you for having me. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more details, please visit our website.